Ashley. Mm -hmm. And I say enjoy Senate meetings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I did. I was very involved at Northridge. I really enjoyed it actually. And I still kind of didn't really go into the system level. Well. So my focus is a little more micro um, than what other folks are doing is I wanted to kind of look at this idea of hybrid, flexible teaching and learning, um, specifically with my own classes. And so the idea was, what would happen if I just let students pick the mode for the class and see kind of how that would play out? And so that was sort of the impetus for this moving forward. And so kind of the research question here is, you know, what if you design a class for self-determination? where the student can actually determine their own path and path meaning they can be in classroom, they could be in synchronous online, they can do asynchronous. And as you'll see, because I was teaching two sections, they could even switch sections um, if that was of interest to them. So that was sort of the impetus to this. Um, some of the core questions, the main question, because this is sort of exploratory, is really, if I open this up, what would happen? And so what would be the selection patterns for students, but also behind the scenes looking at would this sort of sacrifice what we know about good teaching and learning? So presence, engagement, and learning. Um, and is this cost effective? Is it scalable? Is it even preferred either by students, faculty, and or the administration? And so that's kind of behind the scenes, although for this initial, um, we're really looking more at the modalities of students moving forward. And so given that, um, I taught it two sections in spring. Um, it's a required business ethics course. It's required um, for what we call administration management students. Um, I did have two sections. Each one was about 20 students per section. So it was about 38 students. These are upper division students, juniors and seniors in a required course. As with most of it, it's a fairly wide range um, of ages, although the mean was 23. Um, most of the students were male, and most of the students self-identified as Hispanic, which, again, we're a Hispanic-serving institution, and that's not out of bounds for, um, for the demographics for our particular group. So, so kind of a typical class, if you would, um, given our campus and our demographic coming forward and looking at them. And so I start with a pre-survey. And the pre-survey just asks the students to rank order low, one is low, or I'm sorry, one is high, four is low, and just rank order, you know, all else being equal, forget this class for a moment, in general, which would you prefer, which do you think you perform better, meaning grades, which one do you think you learn better, and which ones do you think you have greater engagement? And the students on the survey you know, predominantly picked hybrid. And I, I highlighted asynchronous. And the reason I highlighted this is not that the students aren't telling the truth, but our registration patterns, like if you put up a set of classes and you put up an online asynchronous, that class is filling first. And your classroom is generally filling last. And so even though I think the students were honest and, and this is what they were thinking, we're seeing from an institutional level that actually they're picking asynchronous online predominantly when given the choice. For performance, they felt like, and again, this is perceptions, they felt like classroom or hybrid were the best. Uh, for learning the material, they felt that classroom was best. And for engagement, they felt that classroom was best. And then within this first week of this class and me kind of laying out that they actually have choice, we asked them, you know, so what's your intention? So the class is hybrid flexible. You can do what you want. What do you intend? And the majority of students, at, at least from the first week, said that we are going to engage this class predominantly in a classroom face-to-face -face modality. So what happened? And so that's what gets us to our next piece. And so what I compared is the, the week two, because week one is just introduction, syllabus, and all that. Week two is when we actually start the contact. And then we went all the way to week 16. Week 17 um, was into their final projects. And so this comparison of start to finish. So in week two, the majority of students attended in person. And I asked them, you know, what's your intent? Uh, you know, what did you attend? I also track it so I can triangulate a little bit and then ask them why. And the big themes that came out of week two was, you know, this more personal and they felt like they would do better in learning. Flash forward to week 16, end of the course. Now, keep in mind, 
Monday, the way the class is designed is Monday is a lecture. The lecture is recorded and available. Wednesday is an activity day. And so if they attend the activity, they get credit for it. If they don't attend the activity, then they have to do a separate assignment. And so that kind of plays into this a little bit. But at the start of the course, 20 attended the Monday lecture. At the end of the course, I had four who came in. And now in terms of themes, they're talking about things. And we've seen this from some of the other presenters. Convenience and schedule is now becoming more important than potentially in-person and learning. And so that's the Monday lecture. The Wednesday, which is an activity day, and if they show up, then they get credit, and if they don't, they do a separate assignment. And so again, the issue is, you know, the start of course, you know, maybe just not believing that they can switch sections, but the majority of them came in person, and they reflected being in class, being in person as being important. At the end, a group did attend in person still. But you also then had a large group or an equal group basically opting for the case, which is the separate paper that they would have to do. And then some attending um, in via Zoom, and then some actually switching sections. There was a couple students that had the flexibility to do this. But again, this change in theme from person class to scheduling and conveniencing, convenience becoming much more important as we move forward. And then at the end, I asked them, um, okay, so you had this experience, what would you recommend? You know, would, would you say that you should do, we should do this again? And overwhelmingly, the students really liked hybrid flex as a model. And so their predominant was they actually liked this flexibility moving forward. So what does that kind of leave us moving forward? Um, this is all preliminary data. We're still cleaning up the data a little bit. We'll do some analysis. I am teaching another section in the fall, which will be the same class. So that'll be another 20 students to add. Again, small sample sizes, but kind of interesting. But sort of the issues or questions that start to emerge from all of this is sort of this issue of, well, you know, what about faculty workload? Because to be honest, and I understand the concerns from our colleagues, when you think about hybrid flex, it is a lot of work because you're basically teaching in two to three modalities at the same time. I will say, I actually had fun with it. Um, it was a really fun class to teach, um, but you know it is a lot of work, and so that's kind of an issue. Um, expertise. Um, there certainly is. You know, you're managing the, both groups online and in person. You're having to create activities for students who are asynchronous, managing the recordings. I actually had a separate iPad and the desktop. I had the um, a next generation classroom, so having the right technology and practicing on the right, right technology made a big issue. There still was this question of engagement. So even though students liked the hybrid flexible option, they still felt like that they weren't necessarily getting as engaged as they would in an in-person. And at the end of the day, would it have been better to do high flex or should it have just been a hybrid with maybe the Monday recorded and the Wednesday activity day? What sort of is that optimal blend? This worked in an ethics class. Would it be the same in a math class or a bio class or a psychology class? You know, what would modalities change? From the students, there's sort of this question of registration. You know, what is their preferred mode? And is this an accommodation, which a lot of people are doing with co-synchronous, where they allow a student or two, if they have, say, a medical issue, chime in? Or is this really that we should have this full mode for available for everybody through the entire course? Certainly, there were some comments from students about peer engagement, because people are online, people are in person, people are synchronous, asynchronous. And so they did feel like they lost some of this. Um, this idea of self-directed. So the students are making the decision and is that best to have the students making the decision? As we saw for learning, they came to class. Once they sort of shifted their decision-making towards convenience, they were taking advantage of others. And then kind of, but at the end, there was this high level of satisfaction. And so we saw this across that students really liked, at least in this small data set, the concept of it. 
And then I just wanted to kind of pull up real briefly because others have talked about this when working a lot with our institutional research and looking at different modes. And what we see across the board is quite frankly, there aren't a lot of significant differences between modes. And so there's something else going on in terms of success factors. Also, as with a lot of you coming out of the pandemic, a lot of classes may not be coded correctly. I don't think we have enough data yet to really say, but most of the literature says well-designed courses regardless of the modality, tend to be more effective than others. And so that's kind of an overview of kind of where I'm at and sort of hopefully where I'm going with this. All right, very exciting research. Are you able to extend or continue on next year, Dan? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I, I, I am extending, yeah. I've talked to it, all right. Yes, I am extending into next year. Sounds good, welcome. So last uh, but not least, Rachel, thank everyone for for you're staying with us for the duration. I know it's a little more challenging to get everyone in here in, in one meeting uh, from Chico. Uh, 